um all of the music all of your music yourself yeah yeah do you yeah. collaborate with others so, on that process um not usually um so for most of my stuff i've just kind of done all the demos by myself um and then i take the songs into a studio um and just like re-record them and have some extra production and all that done um yeah and yeah i've had a couple of um friends write a couple of parts on my songs um I had a friend play bass on two of the tracks that I did last year. Um, but yeah, I feel like for the album that I'm writing, I'm definitely getting more into like collaboration um, and like fresh ears, fresh ideas, because mm -hmm. I'm just kind of hitting a bit of a wall um, with trying to write all the parts by myself, especially when I go into the studio and I try and, you know, make each part sound really special and good, but it's really hard to do that when it's just me, if it makes sense. Yeah, totally. I think that um, I've heard a lot of people say, and I think this does ring true, that like collaboration can be the cure to writer's block as well. Like you kind yeah. of do it, especially if it's in the same time period, you know, it's like in a week and you're just going over the same ideas and you present it to someone else. And even the, just them saying like, oh, that's cool, makes you, yeah. you know, want to go, go and roll with it again. So I totally understand. Yeah, that. totally. Yeah. yeah. Have yeah, you done so, much yeah. collaborating? outside of Juno is like I've heard you've been in a couple of bands before before Juno yeah so I've been in other bands um I just played drums in those bands so yeah. basically yeah I just wrote the drum parts um but yeah I haven't really collaborated with people before um I'm really open to the idea of it after this lockdown I just mm. I've got a writer's block as well and I was just kind of like I don't know, itching for a bit more than just writing by myself. Sure. Um, yeah, so I've just been reaching out to um, some of my friends that are musicians and asking them if they want to be on the album and, um, yeah, just, like, coming up with ideas and then sending the stems off to friends and then that kind of adding to that and stuff. Um, it's Yeah, it's quite exciting just having, like, a new perspective on, on the music I'm writing. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I guess it can help build that momentum and totally that excitement because it's not just, especially like writing your own stuff. I mean, we're all a bit self-critical, whereas other people can sometimes yeah. see you. Especially if you're working on your own thing, you've written it, made the drums, made the bass, made the, and then you've spent like hundreds of hours listening to your own voice and hearing yeah. someone else listen to it for the first time. It's like you can get a new appreciation for for that, which is really cool. Yeah, and, like, extra ideas that would make it sound a bit better or, mm. you know, like a new approach to um, the sound as well, which is quite cool. Mm. Have you been writing yeah. your own music for a while or is this the first project that you've – because I know you've played drums and, and – but was this the first time you've kind of written or have you been writing for a while and just not really, like, putting it out in the world? Um. I I was kind of like dabbling in it um, since high school. I just had like a shitty acoustic guitar um, and just my laptop with Garage Band. Um, and my best friend at the time was really getting into like Logic and um, learning how to you know write everything from scratch and build a build a song and stuff. Um, yeah, so as the years went on, I just kind of dabbled and thought nothing of it. And then um, a couple of years ago, I just had this motivation to just write a whole bunch of songs out of nowhere. And then um, my partner um, encouraged me. Well, he actually bought me studio time for my birthday. That's awesome. Um, and, encouraged, <laughs> yeah, and encouraged me to go in and just smash it out. Um and then, yeah, I just went in and that's kind of when the EP happened. And then from there, I just fell in love with it and just would, you know, love to just write all the time and just collect gear and get more into it. Mm. Um, it's such a good, yeah. like, present. I've, I've never heard of yeah. doing that before for a musician, but that's such a cool way of just being like, go on, you know, yeah. you need to use it now. <laughs> yeah. 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 How yeah. long yeah. Do you he, like music? 
Um, I think I've played the drums for like eleven years. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It must be um, like having that perspective on your writing as well, having like a rhythmic like understanding of things rather than just like lyrical and guitar. Like, that. yeah, I can see why you make all your own music because having those abilities kind of gives you most of the package in terms of creating stuff yourself. Yeah, and when I started writing with guitar and stuff, I kind of found that the guitar would lock in really well with the drums and, like, the guitar parts weren't very complicated or anything, but the way it was rhythmic together really made the songs, um, like, sound good and that's probably why I followed that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, do you have any like inspirational people, musicians that don't have to be Kiwi artists, but things that you maybe like obviously you have your inspirations that you may consciously look up to, but do you also have people that you think might have influenced your sort of journey without you even realizing? Um I I feel like the people that have influenced me um are kind of bands that I listened to through high school, like the classic, you know, psychedelic indie rock, like Tame Impala and mm. UMO and Conan Mockinson and, like, just all those, like, really out there bands um, that I fell in love with. And me and my best friend would always go to these shows when they came to New Zealand. And, yeah, I feel like that was probably, like, a big part of um, my influences and people that I looked up to. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you have like mm. a collaboration bucket list, like an artist that you'd like love to work <laughs> with at some point in the future? Like yeah. Be um, live. <laughs> um, I would really love to work with um, MGMT. Mm -hmm. um, but like, because their sounds changed a lot, but um, their earlier stuff, like, some of the first stuff they'd written is just like amazing um, and so interesting. Like there's so many parts and like weird chord cool progressions and stuff. And I would just love to jump into the studio with them and just be like, how do you manage to write like this? Cause it's just insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think some of that music that may seem confusing is sometimes the most interesting. Like that doesn't follow like what you would expect to follow. Yeah. Yeah. And I love, I love li listening to songs that have lots of um, depth to them. So, yeah. like, with MGMT, um, you know, with the stuff that I love, I just, every time I listen to a song, I can hear, like, a new synth part that's, like, mixed really wide and in the distance, but you can hear it and you're like, wow, I never knew that was there, you know? It's just, like, you can, like, pick little pieces out every time and it's just, like, such a journey. For sure, yeah. Yeah. Do you have, like, a plan with the like your album that you're making at the moment when's that due to release um there's no actual set date yeah um but yeah i feel like i'd love to have it out probably by the end of next year yeah um because i'm i'm pretty much halfway through writing it so um i'm just going to keep going with that and see what happens but, yeah, I just don't want to put any pressure on myself to have a deadline. Um, and I don't want to, like, rush any songs um, yeah. and have them be, like, unauthentic or whatever. So, yeah, hopefully for summer next year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a creative process and you don't want to, you know, stop any cool stuff that might come naturally by putting a due date on it. So I understand that. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Yeah. And you only get to write your first album once, so might you know might as well just like make it really spectacular and yourself, you know. Yeah. Do you have like a direction with um, like meaning or anything with the album, like, or is it just like songs that, that they come to you at the time? Like, are you setting out to create? Do you have like an image of what you are wanting to create, or are you just kind of like letting it come to you? Um, definitely just letting it come to me, eh? Um, I have like a wave of inspiration or like something significant in my life that I can write about um 
because every song for me has some sort of meaning of something that I'm thinking about lots that's happening in my life or um you know if it's like a something to do with my friendships or I don't know something like that you know just personal stuff yeah um so I feel like I kind of wait for these experiences to come about so then I can write about them and actually have the emotion attached to them instead of just like writing about something that doesn't mean anything to me yeah absolutely yeah do you feel like um obviously being a part of ones to watch is super exciting um how did you sort of like fall into that and do you feel like that's really put a sense of direction on 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 what you're creating like was the album something you were had been planning to do and is this kind of like how has that changed the navigation I guess um well once to watch was kind of an the bling that happened um I just had Mike from Live Nation hit me up over email and he was kind of like oh you're gonna do ones to watch and I had no idea what it was and I was kind of just like yeah it'll just be another gig like whatever (laughs) um but it was yeah it was actually such a cool experience um it definitely you know made me kind of pause my album and just focus on um the live performance and like Mm -hmm. you know making sure that I'm balancing out the two um instead of just writing all the time Mm -hmm. um but yeah it was it was a really cool experience um yeah really different but really cool yeah yeah (laughs) I mean the two definitely balance each other out you know like live shows bring the ears to the creation you know so you have people to share with and and people love, yeah like I love gigs you know like we love going and, and seeing that stuff yeah yeah it's so much fun yeah um but it's it's really easy to overdo mm. shows as well um I feel like before COVID I completely just played way too many shows because I was so excited because everyone was like oh yeah. come play for me and you know do these shows and um it was just like I burnt out a wee bit mm. um so it's been it's been really nice just you know having like an album to write so then I can actually say you know no to some more shows and like actually spend more time just creating and making sure the live set's really tight and <laughs> do you have any yeah. gigs planned for the future um yeah we've got a couple of festivals lined up for summer awesome um and we're also doing a halloween show in dunedin in october um which is cool it's going to be with a couple of dunedin bands um called porpoise and koizilla oh yeah um and yeah and the theme around that is each band um dresses up as one of their favorite bands or artists and also plays like three of their songs. Oh, that's so fun! Like a big yeah. So we're do- situation. Yeah. 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 So we're we're gonna do MGMT, um, because it's kind of like one of the bands I can relate to the most in terms of yeah. um my sound. Yeah. Um. So, so that'll be really interesting. <laughs> yeah, definitely a, a different take on a gig, but for Halloween, yeah, it's perfect. You know, people love to get a bit wacky and yeah go to things and dress up yeah Yeah. what festivals you yeah um I'm playing others way oh yeah um that was postponed um and what else I don't know what else has been announced (laughs) (laughs) um yeah oh Le Currents oh yeah that's fun yeah 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 I wanted to go to that last year I think last year whatever yeah. was not in COVID um but didn't get to make it down but I love these like little ideas of like one day festivals I think that that's so I don't know I mean I love a good two three day festival but there's something that's so easy about just going to something for a day rather than having to take your camping gear and and set up yeah yeah yeah, yeah for, for sure. sure yeah we played um Tora Bombora oh, last yeah. year that's fun um and that was there was a couple of days in the middle of nowhere and we had to um take our tents and sleep in our trucks and it was actually really windy the whole time so it's just quite funny that we were just like camping at this festival 
people's tents were getting blown away and like middle of nowhere nowhere to go <laughs> I honestly but, I think like nine out of no not nine out of ten like six out of ten festivals it's like terrible weather it's yeah so hilarious how that happens but it's all part of the experience I guess yeah I mean it yeah it makes it you know a good festival you know you got to have all the quirky things that come with it <laughs> do you have any like yeah. um festival aspirations or like gig aspirations like places or countries or venues that you'd really love to play with play to play it in the future um I haven't really thought too much about that especially with COVID it's kind of like been a bit of a funny one in terms of like planning ahead yeah yeah um but I yeah I would like I would like to get over to Australia for um just like some travel and also playing music around the place um whether it's like solo or with the band, I'm not sure, but I feel like that would be like a really cool first step in yes. the next direction. Yeah, we're lucky to have um, those. Yeah, and I've I've never travelled before, so I I feel like Australia would be a good start. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, nice and yeah. close and familiar enough, but still different enough to feel like you've done something exciting and gone somewhere new. And like that, that yeah. fan base and like music consume, cons- like the music that they consume there is quite similar to the music that we consume here. So it's, I think, a lot of yeah. artists like find it easy to find people that that want to come to shows over there as well. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. So hopefully that happens sometime in the near future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you have recording set up at your house, or do you kind of go? into studio to record record your stuff um so I've got this way studio at the moment that I'm in it's oh, cool. like my computer and um yeah just like all my music gear and stuff That's a pretty good setup yeah so um it's ideal because it's separate from the house yeah um that I'm flooding in so um I just come out here and I can sing and play guitar and not annoy the flatmates which is perfect that's a score. Yeah. That. That's awesome. Yeah, and it's, like, right beside the beach as well. Like, the beach is right behind me. So it's just, like, primo for music creation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, it's so cool when you end up in those spots that just make it easy because, you know, yeah. in a weird way, you kind of need some a certain amount of stars to align in order to be able to be in the headspace to create, you know, and being... Yeah, totally. Whatever that whatever does it for you, whether that be the beach or the mountains or the city or. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah it's pretty ideal. And um, the studio that I go to, to record the songs after I've done the demos um, is out in Port Chalmers, which is like a 15 minute drive down the peninsula. Um, and it's just like, again, like by the beach, by the water, it's like really beautiful down there. Um yeah, it's really inspirational. It's quite nice just having like some form of beautiful scenery to help, you know, inspire the workflow. Mm. That must have helped a lot mm-hmm. during lockdown as well, you know, having a space to feel like you can get out of it. Yeah, mm. totally. It was um, it was so nice just walking along the beach every day and, you know, going down there to just write lyrics and poems and mm-hmm. Yeah, it was really cool. Write a lot during lockdown. Like, do you feel like that was a productive time for you? I feel like people either have one or the other. <laughs> yeah, um, it was a really productive time actually. Um, me and my flatmate spent um, a lot of the time in the studio, just like writing really random, kind of sarcastic music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, um, and she's just begun singing, so it's kind of like a new thing for her um which is also exciting because it's kind of like a new energy that she brings to it all you know she's like she's not sure about you know the processes and stuff and like learning heaps and it's just really fun just having like someone else around that um is also really excited about it yeah Yeah. and like that fresh perspective is sometimes like good because being like when you get used to stuff, you kind of 
accidentally make rules for yourself sometimes, you know, and, and have yeah. people who don't know that doesn't matter. Yeah. They come in and yeah. don't have any expectation for a verse, chorus, verse, chorus, and who knows what yeah. and that kind of thing, you know? Just yeah. let, it, let it flow. Yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, so oh, exciting. Yeah. Like, do you, is the name of the album out? Yeah, I think I called it um, – at, at the beginning, I um, was going to call it Floating Alone um, in correlation with the single Floating. Yeah. But I decided that um, Floating and So Hazy aren't going to be on the album and I'm just going to start fresh. Cool. So um, it's going to be called Mind All Right. Nice. Um, yeah. I don't know where that came from, but I was just kind of like, I need to ma- make an album name um, before I release any singles or anything. So, yeah, yeah that's kind of just what came to me. And, nice and, and simple. who knows, like maybe after you release the album, it will all make sense to you and you think, oh, of course, you know, it, all the pieces will come together and, and it will actually end up representing like your whole, your whole piece. Be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully COVID can, you know, go away and, and once you release the album, you can come and tour it up in Auckland and maybe do Welly as well and Dunedin. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be really nice. Um, we haven't actually played a headlining show in Auckland yet. Yeah. Which is quite quite hilarious um, because it's been meaning to happen for such a long time. Yeah, yeah. But there's just never been venues available or COVID's come around and then we've had to, you know, like postpone or cancel the shows or whatever. Mm, so, yeah. Yeah. It'd be there's really cool. Um, quite a good, quite a few bands up here, like keen to um, open for people and, you know, lots of um, sort of being part of the pop, Auckland pop music scene, quite a few people keen. So if you, if you are looking yeah. for for acts or venues or whatever like feel free to hit me up I can convene on this side of the of water ah oh, cheers <laughs> <laughs> awesome yeah that'd be cool yeah well hopefully if you come up this way let us know and we can um have you off at the 13th floor or something yeah nice yeah, yeah. that'd be really cool cool Sweet. all right well I think I'll wrap it wrap it up there before the internet decides to <laughs> destroy us again yeah so that's yeah. all good <laughs> yeah, nice talking to you awesome yeah nice to meet you yeah you <laughs> hopefully um, awesome meet somewhere in person today and like at some point <laughs> once go to go the way yeah 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 hopefully it goes away soon <laughs> awesome <laughs>